the circular economy is, is something totally different. It's about uh, putting the economy, the materials, the resources we all have and should need to share into an ecosystem instead that kind of mimics the natural system we have on the planet. And that makes uh, waste a thing of the past. In the circular economy, we don't have waste. Waste is a resource. According to a report from Accenture, the circular economy could unlock $4.5 trillion of growth by 2030. Imagine the quantum and scale of new business opportunities it would present to business developers in this move from linear to circular. Welcome to the Business Developer Podcast with Sujay, a source of inspiration for business developers. By listening to this podcast, you may gain some ideas, inspirations or food for thought towards your own journey of developing your business successfully, now or in the near future. In today's episode, we shall learn about circular economy and also hear about some of the opportunities and roadblocks business developers are presented with in the circular world. Today's guest is someone who lives and breathes circular. Let us go through a learning experience of circular economy with the help of our guest Ellen Bergman, a circular economy champion. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming our guest, Ellen Bergman. Hello, Ellen. Welcome to the Business Developer Podcast. Thanks for taking out time to join this episode. Thanks for having me. Great, Ellen. To give you a brief about this podcast, Ellen, the goal of this podcast is to make a difference in the lives of those working hard to develop their business who could get inspiration from the content shared through the podcast when they're maybe having a tough time at their work. Very tough life for a business developer out there, right, Ellen? Yeah, I can imagine. So to get started, Ellen, tell us the story of your life. Help our listeners to learn about you. Wow, the story of my life. I, I will try to do the short version. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, well, I grew up in a middle class family here in Sweden, in Stockholm. Uh, I had uh, three siblings and a dog. Um, grew up in a villa, a house. It's a very small house, not a big one. And I guess I kind of quickly grew into environmental issues uh, growing up because my mom, uh, she's kind of always been an inspiration for me. She she was always uh, trying to support environmental organizations. Uh, when we were watching uh, movies, uh, she was always on the uh, the Native American side when there was like cowboys and Indians because they were always living in harmony with nature. And she was like, they are the good guys and the, the cowboys are the bad ones. Okay. And also, we were out in nature much and out boating and sailing and so on. And uh, so it got it got me appreciating nature. And um, yeah, uh, so I think it's kind of like uh, caring for the environment and uh, really being engaged in those kind of issues came really early to me. And also, speaking of my mom, she, she actually did a campaign uh, with us kids for her company uh, when I was 11 years old trying to get them to change to environmentally friendly paper instead of bleached paper. So I, I quickly saw that it can make a difference. And that was a really big uh, consultancy company that actually, uh, and they, they did that globally eventually, uh, but Sweden started out. So yeah, that's a bit like from my background, I guess. Okay. So you have been very much exposed to these environmental conscious, environmental friendly approaches or solutions, if I can call so thanks to your mom, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, she, she was uh, the one and it got me thinking about these issues and then it kind of uh, snowballed from there, so to say. So what are you doing presently now? Uh, well, right now, uh, I've been the last seven years working as a corporate partnership manager and circular economy expert at WWF Sweden. Okay. And uh, also uh, the last six years, I've been running an organization or engaged in an organization or spokesperson for an organization called CradleNet which is a member-driven organization working to accelerate the circular economy here in Sweden. And I'm also engaged since the last two years back in an organization I started up and that's called the Nordic Circular Hotspot that's now gaining momentum and we're building the whole organization together with other six countries. Wow, what are you not doing, Helen? <laughs> well, well, if you want to save the planet, we don't have uh, much time, so we have to move quickly and do everything we can, right? That's true, that's true. Are there anything else you're doing? Well, I like sailing a lot. That's usually either people know me because I'm a circular economy person <laughs> speaking a lot uh, publicly about this or because I've been out on an adventure with my family sailing for uh, over a year to the Caribbean and back and I did some video blogs about that. So uh, either either it's one or the other, I guess. 
Do you have some extra hours in the day? Some 35 or 36 hours? Uh, what, sorry? Now, I'm just saying, we all have 24 hours in a day. It seems what you do, you have 35 or 36 hours in a day. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, well, I need 48, but I'm, I'm negotiating with someone upstairs about that. So. <laughs> okay, that's great. So let's get started in each of the pockets because you do so many interesting things. I want to a little bit dwell deeper on that. Yeah. WWF, what is it for a person who doesn't know about it? What does that do? Well, WWF is one of the world's largest environmental organizations. It's an NGO and uh, we have offices in over 100 countries. We have been around for almost 60 years internationally, and I think 50 years in Sweden and next year. And we're working uh, to make sure that people live in harmony with nature. And that's a big struggle because it's going in the wrong direction. We're working with uh, everything from businesses to politicians to uh, private citizens and, and try to really make everybody understand what the big issues are and what you can do about it. So we work on every single, uh, well, everywhere we can to make a difference, basically. So I work a lot with businesses and try to to shift them into making um, more sustainable business practices, basically. That's great. You know, and let's focus on the business topic as this is a podcast to help the business developers. One point that I read as I get into this topic is shift from linear to circular economy. Have you heard that also? And what's your viewpoint on that? Yeah. Well, right now we live in a linear economy. Most people don't really realize this. We have a really capitalist system and it's linear in the way that we are developing things, very bad materials. Often it's plastic fossil based and we make it a really bad quality and we produce it uh, through bad fossil fuels energy. And uh, it's made to be broken uh, in a year or two or very short thereafter. So you throw it away and then you make new stuff very fast. And that's a linear economy. But the circular economy is is something totally different. It's about uh, putting the economy, the materials, the resources we all have and need to share into an ecosystem instead that kind of mimics the natural system we have on the planet. And that makes uh, waste a thing of the past. In the circular economy, we don't have waste. Waste is a resource. And it's not about selling as much stuff as possible, which is the basis of the the linear economy. Instead, it's about filling the needs we have as people. So instead of you needing to own a car, you have the need to transport yourself from point A to point B. So there could be lots of different services to help you with that. Instead of you have to own a car and the car probably stand still 90% of the time. It's not um, a very good product to have, and it costs the environment a lot. So that's very shortly to tell you about the the circular economy, super short. That's a great summary, getting my mind thinking in that direction and how it could be possibly beneficial to business developers. I see there could be a lot of opportunities that could come in both for organizations which are presently engaged in a linear economy, as you said, to bring up services or solutions to get migrate or move slowly to a circular economy. And then there could be startups helping these large organizations to make it happen. In addition, there could be new companies, new innovations that could come in in the totally new circular world who starts and thinks from that perspective. What's your view towards these two different areas and what kind of a traction or potential you are seeing in the market today? I think there's huge potential and opportunities in the circular economy. The world is right now only 8.6% circular, which means that we have 100 billion tons of raw materials that we're using into products. And that also equates to 10 tons a year uh, with waste that we generate uh, per person. So just if waste is a resource in the circular economy, you can, if you start a new company, those 12 tons that we just waste today, what can you do with that? That's a resource in the future. If you can make that, if you think about something that we feel is something that you should throw away today and has no value, if you look at it with other eyes, the value is all in the waste. Right. What can you make of it? There's so many products. And also, I mean, just looking at the garbage dumps today, there's like, gold and silver and all of these uh, precious materials in there that someone needs to mine. So just the mining of our old waste dumps is a huge business opportunity, I would say. Yeah, it's true. 
and then looking into that what business models do you see are needed to make this circular economy a reality or what business models you see are getting more adopted in the near term where a new business could focus on yeah i'm lecturing about this a lot actually and uh, i'm i usually have a, like a long list of the business models coming in the circular economy there's probably a few more so if anybody out there listens to this and have a, a few more business models please uh, give me a shout out and uh, I'll get them into the list. But I can go through the list that I have. And one of the business models that I think is like super crucial is the circular design part. Because if you design products or services in a circular way, then you design out waste, for instance. One example is Fairphone, for instance. It's a smartphone company. They produce phones. But instead of doing it like the usual companies, the large ones does, they take new raw materials out of a mine and they make all these, the cameras, the, the screens and everything. The Fairphone uses already secondary materials. Materials are already been recycled once or more. And they make all the components modular, which means that if your camera breaks, you, you can change the camera module. It's a different type of business model where you, instead of buy a new phone every year or every other year, you can just upgrade your phone. And that's circular design thinking. And you can have circular design thinking in building houses or cars or your service and so on. It's all about looking at the need of a person or, or a society and making it uh, as optimized as possible without any waste. And another uh, business model is, is uh, refurbishing. And, and that's uh, something that Caterpillar has done, for instance. They make really big construction um, and machinery. So they had a problem pretty many years ago where all these old machinery, especially in, in old farms, were just standing rusting and nobody did anything about. And, um, and at the same time, they had a lot of cost connected to producing more and more new machinery. And someone at their office had a, an idea like, why don't we take in the old rusty machines, upgrade and we refurbish them, and then we sell them again? Wouldn't that be more cost effective? And it was. It was super cost effective. So now they're doing it. They have a totally new business model in refurbishing. And now Renault and other companies are taking after their good examples. So that's really good too. Yeah, I see refurbishing coming into other product categories like our laptops. Yeah, exactly. And another thing that I think many knows about is the... Uh, the business model would reuse. And that's, uh, I mean, in Sweden here, we have Blocket and Tradera, for instance, where you can sell your own, your old um, furniture or cars or whatever, uh, or clothes, skis, doesn't matter. I think there's a Craigslist in the US, uh, similar. So reuse, you sell something someone else, is, uh, someone else reuses uh, the product. But another business model is product as a service and that we have, uh, Philips, who used to, um, well, they actually still sell um, like refrigerators and other electronic devices, uh, especially if kitchens and so on. They got um, a call from someone who asked them, we're going to build a new office. We want light in our office, but we don't want to, you know, have someone to just be hired to take care of you know, switching light bulbs and stuff. Can you sell that as a service to us instead? And they looked at that business model and see if they could do something. And that turned into another company now that uh, Philips started that's called Signify. So they were called Philips Lighting uh, for, a, for a while, but now there is Signify. So now they actually have a service, uh, light as a service. So now you can, you can instead pay for the amount of light you have over your office or your desk. And they will make sure that the lamps uh, are always working, that it's uh, they're run with renewable energy and so on. So the product as a service uh, is coming really well. I think it's coming to the cars also. Didn't Volvo launch something like a subscription-based car usage? Yeah, we have, that, it's called M. It used to be called Sunfleet before. But I think there's more and more rental services for cars, for instance, coming up. And another business model is upcycling. And that's when you take a bad material, like, for instance, um, old fishing nets, uh, they're just floating around and, and kill dolphins and, and turtles and stuff. And you take that bad material and you make it into something better and good. So, for instance, the company Interface does that. They take uh, old fishing nets and they make it into um, office carpets. Adidas does the same thing with um, shoes, for instance. They have the whole old fishing net uh, shoes uh, collection. 
out. So you take a bad material and make it into something good. That's upcycling. And another thing that's coming more and more now, which is still pretty new, it's the regenerative production. And it's mostly so far been uh, used in food production. But that's when you, I mean, right now you're producing food and you're, you're taking out a lot of nice uh, nutrients and so on from the, the soil. And uh, you have to put on uh, mineral fertilizer and usually a lot of pesticides if you don't do it organically. But eventually a lot of, of the life from the land will be depleted. And, and also it's very bad for biodiversity. Now they're looking into, if you do it in a regenerative way, then you actually add on more nutrients and it's been growing more biodiversity. So it's even better for the land than before you started growing food on it. So it's another type of adding value and good things to the planet, actually. And the classic one everybody's always talking about when it comes to circular economy, which I always say you shouldn't talk about this first. It's an important part, but it's not the most important part. And that's recycling. And that's the classic when you buy a PET bottle, you recycle it, right? So, but that's also coming into new type of businesses uh, as fashion, for instance, uh, and electronics, where you can recycle your old phone and your laptop, but also your new, uh, your old clothes. And so and make it into new clothes. So recycling is good. But the reason I say it's the last thing you should do in the circular economy is because it uh, needs so much more energy than the other business models. So that's the last thing you should do when you loop things and you circulate things. So the best thing would be to keep a product in, the, in a, such a long cycle as you can, actually. That's the best for the planet and a uh, circular economy. So if you recycle, you do a lot of small loops all the time and it takes more energy. And the last one, uh, or actually the second last one, that's the sharing economy. And that's kind of also the Volvo thing where you, you rent a car, but you share it with a lot of other people. But that could also be you share your home through Airbnb, for instance. You can share your tools. There are two libraries coming up now where you can actually loan or drill or something when you need it. So you share your things. You can also rent out your things. And the last one is industrial symbiosis. And this is coming really big. It started a lot in China, actually, because they're, they're really good at doing really big things. But it's about industries working together. And for instance, we had a, an industry here in Sweden that had a, a new CEO and he had a problem with a, a chimney going up that he had to do it and need to do it bigger because he had a, a chemical coming out that was a, a waste product from the industry he was taking over. And he went around the business industry area asking what the other industries were doing. And he instead, after a while of building this big chimney, he found that the neighbor next door needed that chemical for their production. So instead polluting it within the atmosphere, he actually built a pipeline into his neighbor uh, that actually bought that chemical. So instead, then you have a symbiosis. And you can really use your neighbor's waste product as something good instead. I mean, this was a chemical, but it could also be right now they're doing uh, bread to beer. I think it was in Scotland and Ireland that did this big project. They looked at a city and they saw that one of the biggest waste products were bread. And then they could find that the ones that needed the bread were beer companies because they can make beer from it. So instead of just feeding the bread to the pigs, they can make beer of it and then so they can loop it one more time and more money could be made in the process. So there's a lot of cool things in industrial symbiosis as well. Yeah, that's great. I think if I count, you have given nine ideas or nine business models which companies could look at to develop their business, either enhance if they're one of those or find innovative solutions in each of these areas, right? If I look at it, yeah, some of them are common, like sharing economy, we have been all spoiled through maybe Airbnb or Uber, we have been all knowing it, but some of my favorites like circular design, Fairphone, I really loved it. And then when you talk about upcycling, regenerative food production, and then even the industrial symbiosis, there could be really big play in each of these areas. Yeah, absolutely. Now looking at these positives, if such is the potential, and since you are so much close into this domain, what are the challenges or roadblocks are you seeing with the adoption of it? Why aren't businesses latching on to all these ideas and business models? Why aren't we seeing an explosion of activities 
in this area because there's so much potential. Yeah, well, first of all, I think the main reason is because there's still very low knowledge of circular economy and what it is. So I think that's like the largest roadblock so far. But it's, I mean, more and more people understand what's said, what it's about and, and so on. So that's, it's good. Another roadblock is that just because it's circular doesn't necessarily mean that it's good for the environment. So you can actually circulate bad products and materials too. So in Sweden, there, there's an example. We don't have any garbage uh, dumps, for instance, but we have something called incinerators we, from waste to heat for instance, or you can do it for waste to energy, which basically means that we burn all the garbage and we, we call it uh, energy recycling, which is not, I mean, it's a, it's a linear system. I mean, we're not going to have uh, waste in the future. So now we're burning our resources. So that's a bad idea and, and, and a roadblock because it, people think just because we do something else, it's, it's not in the landfill, but it's still, it's not a good circular example. And another roadblock is uh, the complexity of transition into a circular economy, because, I mean, it's not only about making one product as a service or slightly building new business models and startups. We actually need to, to change the whole system because the economic system that we have right now, it's not sustainable. And changing an economic model that we have and that's been kind of working in the last few hundred years that's a big challenge. So it's a big complex question and a, a big issue. So that is something that when once people start to look through like the outer fluffy <laughs> and, and fun part, then it's going to be, it's a lot of work, basically. So another roadblock is to scale of it because we really need to change a lot of big infrastructure on a global scale to make this happen. So in the short term, it will cost a lot of money and also, I mean, it will really uh, require big changes. But in the end, it will save us enormous amounts of resources and money. So it will be worthwhile. So that's also really good to, to understand. And if you look at it really, I mean, there's a lot of outdated legislation that's not fit for a circular economy out there. We need to change. There's also, if you talk about materials, the quality and availability of recycled materials is really small today. And also, usually, it's actually cheaper with virgin materials instead of um, recycled materials. So that's, that's a whole market that needs to be changed as well. And also, like I said, the lack of, of business models and, and the, a lack of mindset regarding circular economy uh, that needs to change as well. So that's why it's so important we are talking about this. And another, the last is thing I think for companies is that the key to circular economy is collaboration. And actually, if you really want to go into, we, we need to go to a circular economy. And that means uh, companies need to start collaborating with their competitors. And that's something totally new and a bit scary, I guess. Yeah, and that collaboration is certainly needed, at least for the industrial symbiosis that you talked of. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Ellen, for mentioning that. But I believe I try to see the positive side of everything. And even though there are roadblocks, there are roadblocks in many things that we do, even getting out on the road, there is roadblocks, but we still need to keep moving. So I feel even with the roadblocks, there are actually a lot of opportunities out here for businesses to come in and actually make a business out of removing those roadblocks. So like, for example, you talked about quality and availability of recycled materials. Those are not there. Businesses could come in to actually make that available. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there is so many opportunities in the circular economy. I mean, it's just according to Ellen MacArthur Foundation. I mean, the circular economy could save European business up to $630 billion a year. I mean, there is so much money and opportunity in here uh, that is, it's just uh, unprecedented, I would say. And also, if we can go into these new business models, that will generate so much money, more new and also environmentally friendly jobs. And that's exactly what we need right now in, in the recession with COVID and everything. So I think there's so much opportunity here. That's great. I think it is lovely talking to you, Ellen, and listening all these things. I think we have to revisit this topic again and you should come back again. But before I let you go, Ellen, I have one of my favorite questions, which I ask most of the guests coming here. The context is that, Ellen, through your career or through your life, as we talked about, you learned many things from your mother. We all take on good practices, habits, learnings, which makes us happy, which makes us successful. But as we progress to the next step of our life, we might 
realize that we need to let go something to learn something new which will make us successful in the present and the future so with that context elin have you experienced such things which used to be a good habit you had to let it go in the present something that you have experienced yeah but i'm not so sure it was good in the past but i used to work in the entertainment industry and i was uh, flying everywhere i was Uh, I don't even know uh, what my carbon footprint looked like. Um, so one of the things that I kind of let go of is a bad habit. I stop flying uh, or I fly as as little as, as I can to to try to be a good role model for other people. But it's actually a very nice life you can have without flying everywhere. So usually I, I have a really nice vacation every summer. I go down to the Mediterranean by train instead and go sailing or you know enjoy a good vacation in the sun but you don't have to do it with a large footprint i also become a vegetarian i've been a vegetarian the last 20 years and i also really try to shop less so i try to only buy things from second hand clothes stores for instance and uh, as much as possible live a, a good consumer life instead of buying new things so but I, i'm not sure uh, that it was a good practice before but i i really changed the way i live but i think i have a better life now with more values so i rec- highly recommend doing it for other people that's great thanks a lot for giving that advice so you consider yourself much more evolved than your previous self right and this is the new self of yours that you really love yeah absolutely and i mean working with something that makes a difference is also extremely fulfilling of course that's great you're certainly contributing and you're a role model i hope many of our listeners listening to you get motivated by most of those some of those or maybe some are already doing it so those who are doing it congratulations and thank you for that so great elin thanks a lot for this session you know you have spoken so many things and i'm sure many of our listeners might be very much interested or curious to contact with you maybe some share some thinking with you so how could our listeners reach out to you if they wish to yeah either you can contact me through my organizations uh, WWF Sweden for instance we're just starting a, a new initiative also in uh, the circular economy called the Baltic stewardship initiative so if you're in Sweden or in the other um, countries around the Baltic sea working uh, in the agri food sector if you're a farmer a producer or in retail working with food in any type of way get in contact with me and we'd really like you to be a member of that initiative and also if you're working if you're in the vicinity of of Sweden and uh, really want to to learn about more about circular economy you can become a member of Cradlenet or if you're a, one uh, in one of the nordic countries you can also become a member of the nordic circular hotspot uh that's an initiative that i just started so um there's many ways to get in contact with me or you can just add me on my linkedin so just uh, uh, google linkedin and elin bayman and i'll add you to my profile that's great elin and i will provide some of the information in the episode notes for our listeners to get easy access to you great so it was wonderful talking to you elin hope you had a great time on this episode thank you for coming here thank you so much for having me it's a sharing economy we should share our knowledge and the wisdom to help others right yes absolutely thanks a lot have a nice day ahead and you too bye bye the circular economy revolution is happening around us it's your opportunity to participate in it create opportunities for yourself and everyone around you hope this episode has helped you to gain ideas inspirations or food for thought to benefit from this ongoing move from linear to circular economy Do give me a high five if you like this episode. I would also love to hear your feedback and suggestions for improvement. My contact information is provided in the episode notes. That's it for now. See you again in the next episode of the Business Developer Podcast. Stay happy, healthy, curious to learn and go circular. Bye for now.